in this video I am going to show you how to create docker images in interactive mode the other mode is like using docker file but this is interactive mode so let's actually jump in and uh, take a look at this and by the way if you are interested in devops career or database career or if you are interested in uh, doing aws solution architect associate certification uh, please feel free to reach out to me by filling out this contact form and you can find this link in uh, the description and uh, yeah just uh, contact me let's have a friendly chat about your career and uh, you know i don't have all the answers but then let's talk actually so the requirements for the demo basically is an ec2 instance if you have an aws account if you don't have an aws account install docker on your uh, laptop or desktop uh, that will work as well but i'm going to use uh, i'm going to be using ec2 instance i'm going to be installing docker on it and then i'm going to be playing with it so let's actually see what else so yeah and if you're using ec2 instance and you know you need to make sure that you can uh, you're allowing uh, basically web traffic uh, to come to the ec2 instance uh, via port 80 and I'll show you, I'll, you know, if you stick with the video, I'll show you why that's required. But that's, those are the two main requirements. Okay, so I'm already logged into my EC2 instance and uh, I am, you know, logged in as root. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Docker. So it's a pretty straightforward command. If you have access to internet, just like, yum install will work so this is amazon linux uh, but feel free to use ubuntu or whatever that doesn't matter for this demo so the docker is installed so i'm going to now start docker so i'm going to use system ctl start docker so now docker must be started there you go it's active and running okay right now my system is clean so I just uh, installed docker I have nothing the first thing I'm going to do is basically create a SAMP a static web page and uh, and I've got the code already written for it I don't want to waste your waste your time just writing in front of you so I'm just going to create oh so yeah so the file is already existing so this is my code so I'm gonna just change this version back to v1 okay so I've got my static web page which is a very simple HTML page and the next thing I'm gonna do is basically use HTTPD so HTTPD so which is the Apache web server right I'm going to use HTTPD Apache web server to create a container called my web page and then I'm mapping the port 80 to my docker host which is the VM that the docker is running on and I'm just mapping the port that way if I hit the IP colon 80 from my web browser I should be able to reach this uh, website actually so but this is actually coming from public registry I mean it's available you can go look it up on docker hub so if I and docker run command will basically create a container and it will pull the image from public re registry if it's not already downloaded to your machine and then ITD meaning interactive terminal and D detach mode so let's go ahead so as expected it says this is not available locally so it's actually pulling from uh, you know the public library and uh, it's downloaded and created a, a container 
the container is up and running and now we need to copy the the static web page to docker container actually because this is actually what I have in the steps as well basically I will I just installed it next I'm going to be you know I created a static web page I created a container now I'm deploying the app in the container so if I just copy this index.html to my container my web page container under this location and this is a web server so Apache web server is running inside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try hitting hitting this um, uh, this web page or this web server from my desktop so let's say so let me get the IP of my machine which is that and I'm going to be doing IP colon 80 that's the port I exposed as you can see in this command 80 is the port that I exposed and I also allowed uh, inbound traffic uh, to hit or to come through 80 and I am going to be looking for index.html so as you can see this HTML page is now available and I'm actually accessing it through internet let me create another image uh, using this container or this is our first image right so what I'm going to do is so I'm going to do a docker commit and then the container name followed by a tag actually so this is my docker hub actually uh, account username and this is the repo that I'm creating and v1 is the version of the image right so this is my first version of my application so I'm going to be doing a docker commit like that so now if I look at docker images the first v1 version of the image has been created and the other one is the latest httpd uh, the apache web server so every time I say that I have to think about like how many T's I said but anyway so this is the Apache web server and I the point is actually the image is created and now this image contains both this HTTP HTTPD and my application my web server application or static web page uh, so so it's got both so now what I can do is I can do a docker login because I'm going to be storing this image in my in my repository so I did a docker login and uh, if you're doing this for the first time it will ask you for your docker hub username and password if you don't have an account in docker hub please go ahead and create it you need that to be able to store images um, now I've logged into docker all I have to do is basically push this image to public repository and I do that by doing a docker push uh, and before that let me show you uh, my docker hub uh, just to show that I don't have any pre-uploaded uh, any pre-uploaded uploaded, uh, repos with the same name so I'm going to these are my repos and I don't have a repo called my web page so let's go ahead and do this so now the image has been pushed to docker hub so if I refresh this page so yeah, if I refresh this page, basically you can see that um, this my web page repo has been created and there is one image in that repo which is v1. So now let's say I want to make changes to my application. So the same index.html and I am going, going to be calling it my version 2. Right. And 
in the same way I'm going to be copying the um, you know the index.html into my docker again my docker container is my docker container running let's check it is running and then so let me copy it using docker cp command it is copied and then I'm going to be going back to my uh, my browser and refreshing it now it's like now this is version 2 okay so every time I make changes to my application I create a new image let's go back and and just do the same thing and this time I'm going to be doing a couple of extra things so you will see what it is so first thing is I'm doing a docker commit and then I'm also uh, adding a couple of extra parameters one is basically the you know the message to describe uh, to provide a description of what what basically the uh, the change was and then also like I am the author so I'm just going to be adding some author information to this image as well so let's actually try this and it worked basically so we created another image but this time it's the same repo but a different version called v2 so if i do a docker images you can see that there is two versions v1 and v2 and this time all i have to do is i'm all since i'm already logged in i'm just going to be pushing that v2 tag my web page v2 to my account actually so now this image has been pushed out to my docker repo so let's just do a refresh so now my repo has v1 and v2 so this is my container which is running with version 2 of my application if there is any issues with this container uh, I can easily roll back to my v1 I can just you know I already have this v1 image I can create a new container with v1 uh, pretty easily using the docker run command so that's how actually you kind of like interactively create a docker image um, yeah I mean it's most of the times we use docker file in a professional setting in professional workplace um, but yeah, but it, it is actually quite useful to understand how to do this on uh, on a machine directly in interactive mode. So I hope you found this useful and basically thanks for watching my video and subscribe to my channel and please like, share and comment. Thank you.